We're in downtown Westerville, about 15 miles north and east of downtown Columbus. It's an old community, almost as old as Columbus itself. The, the area was settled about 1810. It also uh, had some underground railroad experience, and we're just about to visit the Hanby House, Benjamin Hanby House, uh, here on uh, West Main Street in Westerville, home of Benjamin Hanby, who was a uh, who wrote music. He was a, he was a lyricist and a musician, uh, and he wrote some songs I think you'll you'll find familiar. Hi, I'm Jeff Darby. Hi, I'm Pam Allen. Nice Welcome to, to Hanby House. Thank you very much. It's nice to meet you. I haven't been here before. I have to admit. Well, and I'm glad for the chance. It's a treasure here in Westerville and has uh, repercussions from this history go around the world. Seriously. And it looks like maybe this is the kitchen. I see a big stove. This, yes, indeed, was the kitchen. And believe it or not, one of the daughters in the household said that they always planned for 16 for dinner in this <laughs> space. So that's like cooking a Thanksgiving dinner every yeah, day Yeah, every week. single night. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's see some more of the house. Right, I, I, I can tell already it's a great place. Was this a parlor? Is this where they'd entertain? This is the parlor, and the parlor was for entertaining. Um, that was for the happy times. We have the, the patriarch and the matriarch on the wall, mm -hmm. Bishop and his wife, Ann Miller Hanby. Bishop was instrumental in getting um, Otterbein founded to admit women and blacks on an equal status with the white male Well, this students. was a progressive community. It had history it in the Underground Railroad. Of course, it's temperance history. Uh, so a very progressive community and kind of out on the frontier at the time, at least the time and, it was settled. And the Hamby family had been involved in the Underground Railroad when they lived in Rushville and Circleville, and they continued that activity once they moved here to Westerville. An important underground feature in this room is the vase in the window with the three flowers. That was a secret signal system here in Westerville. Those who were part of the Underground Railroad knew that the number of blossoms in the vase represented how many slaves were currently in hiding here. Anyone else just thought Ann Hanby had some pretty flowers in the window. Now, Benjamin Hanby was a musician. While Ben was a student at Otterbein, he wrote his first song that was published, Darling Nellie Gray. And then um, he continued in his musical career after college. And when he lived over in New Paris, Ohio, is when he wrote his Christmas song, Santa Claus, that we know today is up on the housetop. So I know there's more house. I know there's another room anyway on the first floor. Should we look at some more? Not a lot of house, but I'm happy to show you what we've got. Well, there's a, there's a big bed here, so clearly it's a bedroom, but I'm guessing maybe that wasn't its original use. That would be a good guess. This is the original kitchen of the house. This front window was originally a door into the kitchen. Okay, so there were two front doors, one, one for the kitchen, one to go to the parlor where guests would come in so they didn't have to pass through the kitchen. Correct. Okay. So this was the bedroom for Bishop and his wife, Anne, and the youngest son, Sammy, was only 18 months when they moved here, so he probably spent some time. And then everybody else upstairs. Yes. So let's go see. All right. So this was another bedroom. There are two rooms up here. Right. right. This is another bedroom. Just this right was at the, the top girls' bedroom. Okay. Uh, and you have historical displays in this room now. We do. It's more of a museum room now. We've got um, some of Ben Hanby's sheet music on the wall. And our current exhibit is about the descendants of the Hanby family. So in this case, um, are the descendants of Ben and Kate. Was this his flute? This was his flute. Um, he saved up money for this and bought it. And he crafted the case himself. Well, there's one more room. Mm hmm. So this was the boys' room. Yes, four boys um, grew up in this room. In this corner is a desk that was made by Ben when he was a student here at Otterbein before his family had well, moved to He really to was a skilled woodworker. He was very skilled. And when you think they also knew leather work, et cetera, I, you know, he, he had quite a few talents. Well, the house is so well preserved. It's, you know, it's really in its historical condition with historical furnishings. But how was it saved? I mean, when did the Hanby family leave and, and who were some of the later owners? The Hanby family um, moved out in the 1870s. And then in 1889, a local man named Squire Faust purchased the house. And his story is interesting because Squire Faust was a slave in North Carolina through the end of the Civil War. And then he came to Westerville and ended up buying this house which had harbored fugitive slaves 
and the Faust family lived here longer than the Hambys did. And the whole house is just full of terrific stories. The stories go on and on. The more research we do, the more interesting stories So the story is constantly evolving as you learn new things. It is. And uh, some people say, well, I was at Hamby House 20 years ago. I know. And I go, you don't know yeah. what we've learned since then. Time to visit again. And and yes. we should mention it's it's done, uh, the, the house is run in cooperation with the Westerville Historical Society. Is that correct? Westerville Historical Society is the management partner with Ohio History Connection. Thanks so much for the tour. I, I, as I mentioned early on, I hadn't been here before, much to my shame, but I've seen it now and it's a wonderful place. Well, we have special events through the years, so please come back. And I hope everybody in town will do the same thing. Thanks so much Thank for the you, tour. Jeff.